Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bible study. We're going to be in the book of Genesis chapter 16, but first let's have a word of prayer and then a quick little worship. Heavenly Father, thank you so much God for bringing us here, bringing us through all the turmoil in our lives, God, all the circumstances that we just slalom through, God. Please give us direction and give us faith to do whatever it is that you've given us the power and the desire to do, God, and help us see that. If we have no idea what we're called to do, help us see that today in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you want to join me, we're going to do a little a cappella. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. All right. Hallelujah. So in chapter 16, quick little recap. Um, God has chosen this guy, Abram, and said, through you, I'm going to bless all the peoples of the earth. Your offspring will be more numerous than the stars of the sky, and you will possess this land where you stand. Well, when we get up to chapter 16, Sarai, his wife, is still found unable to conceive, and that's what happened chapter 11. We saw that. So we had the bright idea of doing it ourselves, like we always do. So if you'll notice in verse 3, it says they'd been there for 10 years. So 10 years has passed by since this promise God made. So Sarai said, look, God's slacking on his promise. We better do it ourselves. He must have wanted us to make a way instead of waiting for him. So what happened is, she said, look, here's my slave, Hagar. Take her, marry her, and get her pregnant. God obviously wanted your offspring to come through her since I can't have a child. So Abram was like, thumbs up, let's do it. Now I want to express something, and I've told you this before. Just because you read something in the Bible recorded in the Word of God doesn't mean that it's condoned by God. I'm going to say that again. Abram had multiple wives. That doesn't mean God is saying you can have multiple wives. What it's saying is Abram stepped out of the will of God and stepped out of the will of having a marriage between one man and one woman and having that union in place. He stepped out and it caused a whole lot of problems is what it did. So God is actually showing us in his word by saying, look, here, go ahead. And Abram took another wife. God did not instruct him to do that. Quite the opposite. And then all this stuff happened we're going to see right now. So then he did. He married Hagar and she became pregnant. Well, when she got pregnant, suddenly she started having contempt for Sarai. Because she was like, I'm pregnant with your husband's child. I don't need to answer to you anymore. I carry the child. I carry the offspring. She knew the promise of God. I'm sure she had heard them talking about it. So Sarai was like blaming Abram. What did you do? I blame you for this. Now granted, I think she's right to blame Abram. Even though she gave him the idea and said, look, go sleep with Hagar, marry her, get her pregnant because I can't get pregnant. Just because she said that, Abram should have had the spiritual wisdom and the maturity to say, no, that's not the answer. Right? Eve in the Garden of Eden brought the fruit to Adam after she had eaten it he should have said Eve no we're not going to do this 
Well, we don't know if he, she brought it to him after eating it or what. We don't know if he was right next to her. It's not clear. But the point is, Adam had the opportunity to say, no, we're not going to do that. But instead, he ate it also after Eve. So the point is this. I, I look at that as blaming Abram as well. He should have had the spiritual maturity to say, no, this isn't correct. We're going to wait on the Lord. But he didn't. What happened is the slave Hagar, Abram was like, you deal with her. So Sarai was so rude and mistreating her that she ran away. But God met her where she was at and said, no, I see you. You're going to have many offspring. You're going to be a blessing as well. And I need you to go back where I had you and go back to Sarai and Abram and just trust me. And she did. She trusted in the Lord and went back and she bore the son Ishmael. That being the case, all of this situation just caused a whole lot of pain and suffering. And there's more to come after Ishmael grows up a little bit. There's more pain and suffering because we stepped outside of the will of God and said, no, we're going to do it our way because God, you're taking too long. You must have needed us to make, make a different way. But that's not what we want to do. We want to stay in the will of God even if it takes our whole lifetime. There is no better place to be than in the will of God. So stay in it. Stay the course and stay faithful no matter what it looks like around you. God has reward for you and has blessing. Whether it's this side of heaven or the other, I cannot tell you. But I can tell you that God is full of goodness. And he will reward those who diligently seek him. And if you diligently seek him, you will be in his will. Amen? So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you tomorrow.